What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com. Let's talk about cutting our carbon footprint and living longer. Guys, I just want to state for the record that I own a company that makes a plant-based protein, Ambrosia Planta. This flavor, the vanilla and the cinnamon are available at all sprouts nationwide. We're also number one plant protein at the vitamin shop. We're all over the place. We're in Hy-Vee, the grocery store. So I have skin in the game, but I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be nuanced and I am not a vegan. Okay. I'm also, I'm going to be honest with you guys. While I want the cleanest, greatest planet I am not a, I am not, I am not a climate change guy. I do not believe we need to pay more taxes or enter these crazy treaties. I'm just not the guy and I am not for getting everybody to eat all plant-based. I do believe that there are benefits to plant-based foods, but I also eat a lot of beef. For those of you who follow me on YouTube, who follow me on Instagram, most of my diet is ground beef. I, I eat a lot of ground beef. So I'm going to be real with you. Like I'm going to read this article. I'm going to talk about it. And we're going to discuss it and open up dialogue, okay? Now, this is from the NPR. Now, for the record, I believe the NPR is complete trash. I believe it is a trash organization. And I don't believe any of our tax dollars should be going towards the NPR. It is a complete biased, trash, government mouthpiece. Um, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a propagandist organization. It's complete crap. But we need to talk about this stuff, right? So this article is entitled the diet swap. This diet swap can cut your carbon footprint and boost longevity. Um, and, and of course, because, oh, look, a donation thing came up on NPR, of course, um, by Allison Aubrey, who probably is a trash reporter because she's writing for the trash NPR. But I do see some good things in this article. So we're going to talk about it. If you're aiming to cut back on meat, you want to build muscle strength. You're not alone. Following our story on foods that help maintain strength, lots of you responded to our call out telling you're trying to boost protein consumption with a plant-based diet. And you can do that. Of course, Ambrosia Planta, look at this, 110 calories, 2.5 grams of fat, 2 grams of carbohydrates, 20 grams of protein, brown rice and pea. Okay. Now, a new study published in Nature Food finds that if people swap med red and processed meat for plant protein a few times a week, it's good for their health. It can also reduce their diet-related carbon footprint. For the record, most if not all of the studies comparing red meat or um, meat-based to plant-based are usually using processed foods. They are um, population studies where they're not eating ground beef. They're not eating grass-fed beef. They're not eating... Uh, chicken. They're, they're eating hot dogs. They're eating fast food. So a lot of the times, in fact, all of the studies I've seen have essentially just been using skewed data based on population studies. Whereas plant-based diets, they're plant-based, right? Like they're cutting out a lot of the issues, a lot of the fried foods that are going into these diets that are going into these studies like this one here. So the study found cutting red meat consumption by half leads to significant changes. For instance, eating it twice a week instead of four times a week will shrink your carbon footprint by 25%, may also boost longevity. I want to state for the record also that the carbon footprint thing is, it's untrue, okay? So when you clear farmland for plant-based foods, for plants, you're killing a lot of rodents, of insects. You're taking out a lot of things. You're taking out forests. Whereas if you have sustainable farming, you are in a, as good if not better of a spot. So a lot of this data is skewed. We found that there was an increase in life expectancy of approximately nine months linked to 50% reduction, says study author Olivia Auclair of McGill University. Her study was motivated by the latest Canada Food Guide, which emphasizes consumption of plant protein foods. Again, your, your, your data is, it's skewed because you're going with processed foods. You're not going with a healthy meat diet. You're going with an unhealthy diet versus a plant-based diet, which can be unhealthy as well. Again, a lot of people who switch, and this article actually mentions that, a lot of people who switch to meat-based diet after going on a plant-based diet, tremendous health benefits. Tremendous health benefits. A lot of times people feel better going to plant-based diet, going for meat-based diet. Those are people who generally eat the standard American diet, the SAD, which is going to be crap. If you switch just any kind of controlled diet, you're going to feel better. When it comes to diet change to improve health and climate, we don't need to go to major extremes or completely eliminate fruits from our diet, Claire says. Now, actually, Claire is making sense. 
Not telling anybody to give up meat. They're just telling anybody to cut back a little bit on meat. And I'm not even mad at that. Even Stan Efferding will say, the guy who wrote The Vertical Diet, will say that, hey, if your cholesterol and everything is getting a little high, you know what? Let's make some subtle changes. And they're not telling us to give up all meat and eat Z bugs for these changes in the climate. The study has the evidence that small changes in diet can be consequential, that a diet that's good for health is also good for the environment. I might add, having... Um, getting your meat from a, a farm that is sustainable from a farm that is not a commercial farm, right? That's a sustainable way to live, right? I would experience some, um, but sudden changes can be jarring. We heard from Kyle Backlund, who has adopted a plant focused diet for a long time. He even had a eating meat in many meals. Again, probably guy went to McDonald's at lunch, considered that meat. When he cut back, he felt a drop in his energy level when he exercised protein. Protein and also, I mean, meat is just nutrient dense. Beef is outside of organ meats, the most nutrient dense food on the planet. No vegetable compares to red meat. I would experience some lethargy and weakness, he says, when Backlund realized he needs to up his protein take. His partner, Stephanie Marlene, who does most of the cooking and all seeds plant based diet, found ways to add a more protein in a miso based soups and stews by adding tofu, vegetables, and grains like quinoa. Bean burritos and zucchini fritters are two of her favorite. You can add egg to it as much. Uh, that's plant eggs are plant-based now. Okay. And you can add almond flour, which has a little more protein, not a complete protein source. That's why a lot of these issues are going to be protein based. So if you are going plant-based, add in some planta, it's delicious and it's all protein. Basically Kyle says he is now feeling good on his plant focused diet. Every meal that we have is delicious and I'm fully on board. Backlund says people get all the protein and nutrients they need from a plant-based diet. As long as you do a little planning. No, they can't. They, they can't. You got to supplement with B12. You got to supplement with fish oil. You can get it. You just need to supplement. I'm good with that because I sell supplements for a living. But let's be honest here. I've made a living not lying to you guys. Well, I've made a living doing other things. But part of my living, part of my online persona is not bullshitting you guys. And not bullshitting you guys, I'm telling you, man, you just can't. You can't have a complete vegan diet without supplementing. Likewise, you can have a complete, totally fine diet with just meat. Although I will add that you need fiber. Blaze, will you stop eating the ground cup, Blaze? That dog's got mental issues, man. He puts a variety of sources from lentils, chickpeas, and other beans to nuts and seeds, whole grains and vegetables, not complete protein. If someone is consuming a reasonable variety, meaning protein needs from plant source sustained muscle is no problem. There's an environmental argument for shifting diet as well. Gardner says livestock requires lots of land and water. Richard Wayne and his colleagues at the World Resources Institute estimate that beef production requires 20 more land and emits 20 times more greenhouse gas emissions per gram of protein compared to beans. I I'm not buying that one bit. I'm just not. As we reported by one estimate, if people in the U.S. swap beef for beans, this one trip should only get the U.S. about halfway to its greenhouse gas reduction goals. Their protein would be too low and it would be very inefficient. People would be unhealthy. If you switch from beef to beans, you will not be as healthy. Not as healthy. Now, I'm not saying that's a McDonald's hamburger. I'm saying that's some good old grass-fed beef. All right? Good old grass-fed beef. As we... Um, Many people are unaware of the links between diet and climate, but among those who are, there's a willingness to make changes. When it comes to which changes are beneficial, we really want to make these as simple as possible. People can actually make a change. The reason I like these authors, they are biased. I'm sure they're plant-based people, but these guys are like, hey, you know, ease in, ease in, start with the pinky. You know what I'm saying? But they're not going like, ah, don't eat meat, eat the bugs. When it comes to health and longevity, a clarinet collaborators at McGill University who survey, da survey data. Survey data. These are not controlled studies. Okay, guys, these are not controlled studies. Take it with a grain of salt because this can also lead to, you know, obviously um, author bias. And model what would happen if people made a dietary swaps. They use models to estimate changes in life expectancy. Models. Remember the models for COVID? Those were awesome. But according to the WHO, they were very accurate and they worked. Based on Canadian mortality data and relative risk of disease associated with animal based and plant based foods, which were assessed in the Global Burden of Disease study. The findings fit with other research. Last month, research at Tufts University published a study found people who consume plenty of plant protein midlife has significantly higher odds of healthy aging. More evidence that what's good for health is also good for the planet. I will say this this wasn't as bad as it could have been, right? At the end of the day, if you're plant-based, you can live a healthy life. Something with B12, find a way to get some DHA, EPA through algae sources, and of course, supplement with protein. Getting enough from tofu, from beans, from rice, your carbs, and, carbs are going to be too high. 
too high. Like you're going to get fat. Ambrosia planta will help you out. It's a complete protein. It's a complete protein. And we add branched amino acids to get the protein, the amino acid profile closer to that of a meat based protein. Okay. That's that guys. Hopefully that helped you out. Um, again, a lot of propaganda out there. Um, the climate change thing, I'm going to keep my, my opinion on that. Look, man, I love nature. You guys can tell I live in a nice wooded area. Like I love this shit. I love it. But at the end of the day, I'm, I, I think climate change is being largely used to manipulate the population. And that's just my opinion. If you disagree with me, that's fine. We can disagree on a lot of things. But I, I don't think we should be part of the Paris Climate Accord. I don't think we should switch to electric vehicles. I think we need to be more nuanced about it. But I do think that being clean and efficient in every way possible is great. So for me, what I do is two or three of my meals a day are planta or plant-based. The rest of my meals are eggs or beef. Okay, so I'm... Um, rarely eat chicken i'm a beef kind of guy chicken's a weak bird what did jim harbaugh say chicken's a weak bird why would he eat a weak bird i want a strong strong bull <laughs> man that's all i'm saying man anyway thank you so much for watching if you uh have a chance go to tigerfitness.com these two products are immortal um just don't take the fish oil supplement in here um outside the the salmon oil soft gel this is 100 um, vegan vegans can use this. Okay. So this is a beautiful supplement, a beautiful product, and it is all you need. It is a multivitamin pack. The greatest ever created go to tigerfitness.com support us. Of course, we also have outright bars and vegan outright bars are in stock right now at tiger fitness. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Mark Wilbunner. That's not a game. You've got to hear this. This is crazy. Ambrosia planta is now available for 1200 doors nationwide. Wait, is that the one that I use every day? Yes. The mix is the best, tastes the best, and has the best amino acid profile? Yes, from something that was direct, that people just wanted so bad. We grew into Vitamin Shop, then into High V, and now into every single Sprouts across the nation. Look at that, right at eye level, Madagascar vanilla, melted chocolate and cinnamon Tammy, which flavor would you like? I would take the chocolate, please. <laughs> I knew you would. Enjoy, available now at All Sprouts nationwide.